don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a certain sort of rule applied to the fact that if you want to use the word royal, as in say theatre royal, or the royal hotel or something like that, normally you have to pay something to the Crown Estate, simply because of course using the word royal is, as Harry and Meghan found out, rather, well, difficult to say the least. But of course some people do like to take opportunity to associate themselves with the wonderful British monarchy. And when you think about it, over the years so many people have very successfully, you know, whether they call it live from the Royal Command simply because they recently appeared on there. They fudged the issue. But there was one particular individual that thought she'd hit upon a brilliant idea to, some people might say, well, offer her um, how can I put this nicely, you know, uh, expertise to the British monarchy by highlighting something. Others thought, of course, that she was simply exploiting the association. When I tell you who it's about, well, then you'll fully understand exactly what I'm talking about. As ever, let me explain. It's been lovely to see you today here in the very heart of London, Parliament Square, as you can see, a beautiful place at this point in the day. Very nice indeed. The smell of freshly cut grass as well. One can only assume this could be the final time before the end of the season. So, yes, bring out your poly, what is it, pollen? Hay fever, it's playing havoc already. I know, I've only just sat down as well. <laughs> Let's get back to your royal story of the day. You see, this particular lady I met very briefly briefly only once and uh, was formidable really wouldn't be the word to describe her. We're talking about the self-styled Leona Helmsley, the Queen of Mean. Now for many people, a lot of people in fact know the story of Leona Helmsley, her rise to the top marrying of course the billionaire property magnate Harry Helmsley and becoming something of a central figure literally in the well society of New York. The other side of it, of course, is a lot of people didn't enjoy working for the alleged Queen of Mean simply because she became famous for the words, you're fired. This was the 80s and this was a different time, of course. You could hire and fire staff without so many repercussions, as you can see today. But what was fascinating was that Leona had decided that while she was something of a backseat driver, she decided she wanted to become a front seat driver. And very cleverly, she decided to make sure that she was, you know, front, left, center, everything of the latest marketing campaigns. And she'd hit upon a brilliant idea to align herself with the British monarchy. Let me explain. You see, Leona, like so many people, was a huge fan of the British monarchy. And in particular, Queen Elizabeth absolutely thought the world of her. And on a few trips over here to the United Kingdom, she and her husband, Harry, thought, well, we could get in with the royals if we made sizable donations. So they did things like the Duke of Edinburgh charities and anything else that Leona really fancied. But what she really needed was that all important picture with Her Majesty the Queen. And more importantly, better still, if it could be taken in Buckingham Palace. Leone came from a background of, well, if you've got money, surely you can buy your way in. But even with the royals, as I've told you before, it's simply not that easy. So all the while she'd put quite a bit of money towards charities, Harry's money, people might say, remind you of anybody? Well, the bottom line was then she decided, well, okay, what about this for an idea? And this is what exactly she decided to do in order to make sure that she managed to get her wonderful Helmsley Palace Hotels aligned with the British Royals. Leona and her team had decided to come up with a marketing campaign simply where it was all about, you know, why should you? It was a very famous ad campaign that ran across glossy magazines, television ads and in airlines, all that sort of stuff. And it truly was one of a kind, simply because it was all about, you know, you should have double towels in the bath, you should have this, a phone, whatever. Everything that you needed was they exceeded while you were staying at her Helmsley Palace. They came up with this tagline which they thought would placate the very demanding Mrs. Helmsley. And she loved it. The only palace in the world where the Queen stands guard. It was, of course, a very famous ad campaign. And what was fascinating about this was it let all of her rivals, including the Trump Empire at that time, quite burgeoning, well, in its wake. Leona and her team decided to go one better because she figured that if she asked permission from the British monarchy, would they be offended at using this particular tagline, you know, the only palace in the world where the Queen stands guard. So they decided, of course, to write to Buckingham Palace and they thought if they could get a letter back from the British monarchy, basically, whatever, 
outlining the fact that this was the idea, you know, the sort of queen standing guard at the palace, would Her Majesty be offended if they used this? And truly the idea really was to get the letter back, hopefully from Her Majesty the Queen. This is exactly how marketing people worked back then. And then they could replicate the letter and place it, say, in hotel bedrooms, in a marketing campaign, all of that sort of stuff. Well, according to a very well-placed source who worked with Leona at that time, it took three goes to get a response. And it wasn't the response that the Queen of Mean absolutely wanted. It was kind of unusable. Yes, it came back from the communications office of Buckingham Palace. No, it wasn't signed by any leading member of the British monarchy. And this left her fuming. And once again, she decided to disregard that particular idea. But it's interesting to note when you look in the files and meet people and interview people, exactly some of the things that these people decided, tried and failed to do in order to make sure a little bit of British history rubbed off onto their particular brand. And in the case of the Queen of Mean, sadly, she didn't. Neil Sean, Parliament, London.